Hello everyone and welcome back to our English pronunciation challenge. I'm excited to teach you your first lesson. Today is lesson one, mapping your mouth. Today we're going to explore the fundamentals of improving your pronunciation, understanding how exactly the parts of your mouth are creating sound is going to make you a master at all sorts of accents, not just a British English accent. So let's begin by looking at the different parts of the mouth. We're going to break them down and you're going to be able to identify each part so that you're able to understand exactly how to make the sounds in the next lesson. So it might sound like a biology class, but please pay attention because there is some areas of your mouth that you might not even be aware are so vital to make your sounds. It's a quick video and I just want to go over the key information. So first of all, we have our lips. These are used essentially in P and B sounds, very important for what we call bilabial plosive, where the lips come together and explode apart to create the sound. Next, we have the teeth, shiny big white teeth, I hope. These are extremely important in very difficult sounds like the this sound that we're gonna talk about later, and think, yes, and this. They're very important in how we identify the tongue position with the top of the teeth, which moves us to the tongue, which is one of the most vital articulators in our mouth. It's going to do a lot of work in these next 30 days. And that's why we need to practice every day because it's a muscle and every muscle needs to be worked out to be strong. So it's likely if you're struggling with pronunciation is your tongue either doesn't know the position or it's weak at arriving to that position. It would move too slowly and maybe not quick enough in your natural speech to be able to hit the sound perfectly. And that's what we're going to fix in this 30 day challenge. Next, we have a very interesting part of the mouth, alveolar ridge. This is the part of the mouth which is inside the mouth. And if you touch your tongue at the top of your teeth and run your tongue backwards, you're going to find this bit that's slightly hard and then it's going to run up into your mouth. And just at this point where it is about to go up into your mouth, this is the ridge, the alveolar ridge. And this is an extremely important part when creating the T sound and the D sound and even the N sound. We also have the hard palate. So if you go to the ridge of the mouth where we talked about this ridge and you just run your tongue back slightly further, what you're going to find there is the hard palate. So here is further back in the mouth and here it will, as you will feel, do it with me. You'll feel that the position as you push your tongue against the top of the mouth will actually be quite hard and resistant to your tongue. Then the soft palate. So if we continue at the back of the mouth, we'll go past the hard palate and we'll arrive finally to the soft palate. You'll feel the difference as your tongue touches it. It will become soft. Yeah. It's quite far back in the mouth. The sounds that we need to know about the soft palate is the K sound and the G sound. So we're going to work on these. And then last part that we really need to know about is called the glottis. This is actually the space between your vocal cords. And it's very important that we understand the principle of voice sounds and voiceless sounds. These are going to be key dynamics of what we need to do when we're pronunciating in any language, but especially in English, because the human vocal cords are muscles and understanding the glottis area, whether it's open or closed, basically open, allowing the airflow to pass or closed vibrating is going to give an indication to the sound and the sound quality that you'll produce as you use words. So now that we've mentioned all the parts and you can see them clearly, let's focus on what we should be attentive to during this training. And we want to become aware of our mouth. We want to become aware of exactly where is the tongue position, exactly where are my teeth when I make these sounds, exactly where is the positioning of each of these parts. This is going to be really helpful for you to start to get a feel for the movement of your mouth and the articulators as they work together and whether you're in the right position or in the wrong position. Because then when you hear back your own sound production, you'll start to be able to realize what maybe has gone wrong, which parts of your mouth are out of place, causing the sound to not be similar to a native speaker. So pay attention, feel the movement of the tongue and your other parts of your mouth and be attentive to them as you go through the words and phrases and expressions that we're going to cover in this challenge. Step number two is practice in front of a mirror or use your mobile phone to record as you practice so you can see yourself in the mirror and be able to see exactly what's happening inside your mouth. There are some articulators that are back in the mouth that you won't see with the mirror, but it'll definitely help you with identifying the front positions of the mouth to see 
if you are following the instructions that you'll be taught in this program. Third step that we can do to really improve our pronunciation is slow it down. It's not a race. Let's take our time to really feel out the sounds, even though it might feel like you're going slowly in the beginning and it's only one or two sounds that you can work on in the first week, mastering those sounds can be the difference between being understood and being completely misunderstood. So you might want to move slowly in this moment of learning so that in the future you can speak much faster and be understood without having to repeat yourself consistently. The fourth part is we're gonna to have to record and re-listen to our own practices to check and see if we're really making the improvements that we are expecting to make in this challenge. You're gonna be able to compare that against my pronunciation and the recordings that you make to see if you've really cracked the code on understanding the sound in English. So as I said, this is gonna be important for you to improve your English accent, but it's also gonna help you be able to learn other languages. Myself, I'm learning Spanish and Catalan, and this understanding of how I position my mouth has helped me to be able to learn other accents and other languages. So this is an incredible investment to your future of language learning. So remember, pronunciation is all about position, practice and awareness of what's happening in your mouth. Keep practicing and I'm going to see you in the next lesson where we're going to cover the IPA chart, the secret key to understanding how to use different sounds in any language.